Hello everyone, good morning, good evening. Welcome to Cloud and DevOps Batch 57. So today is the session six of our Cloud DevOps Batch 57. Before I start the session, I would like to give a quick recap on what's being covered in the previous session. Previous session, we have discussed about how, if you wanna raise a request with Amazon, how can you create a management ticket, account management ticket, anything related to your billing or whether your account is activated or whether you wanna increase the quota where you can reach out to the AWS account management. You can also raise a request with a technical support in case if you are having really technical challenges or features. But we also discussed that since we are all accounts are free tier accounts that are that we selected to create the, with a basic plan which is absolutely free, we don't get a privilege to talk to technical support. All right, and also we have discussed how a spot server can be created and technically you are not creating a server, you are placing a spot request and that request is creating a server for you. That also means if you want to destroy the server, you cannot directly go ahead and terminate the server. Even if you terminate the server, the request which you have placed is going to create one more server. So the strategy to delete a server is almost you should go and cancel the request if you don't know. Okay, if you don't want. Also, we discussed what are the limitations with spot server in an extensive way. And if you want to create a server in spot or if you want to place a spot request, there is also an option called as a bidding. Uh, with bidding, you can mention what is the best price that you can quote. So based on that, request with a similar set of requests Amazon encounters and if Amazon has limited resources, now what they're gonna do is, they're gonna give you resources or the request will be fulfilled to the in instances that are highest quoted. It's just like a conventional bidding, but in a software oriented approach. Sometimes whenever your request is not fulfilled, you can also see the status of the request as pending status. And if your request is not processed, you'll see it in a pending status. And if your request is processed and if you're able to see the server, then you can see the server status as running or fulfilled state. All right. And also we discussed if anyone faces, even though they uh, they were able to activate the account still if you see the instance launched state okay with the billing related issue or payment payment uh, payment mode is not verified in that case you need to reach out to the <clears throat> amazon all right also how the spot services are worked all these things we have discussed also we have discussed amis offered in amazon are bare basic minimum Okay, whenever they have published the AMI, so your patches of that operating system will be up to the date of when it was released. So you don't know whenever you're going to use it. And that's the reason it's always recommended to create your own instances, so your AMIs by updating the patches and installing all the needed things and publish it. Okay, keeping the naming standard in mind. All right, so the next thing is, if you wanna learn Linux, what are the few things that you have to keep in mind? is also something we have extensively discussed. And also I have mentioned why Linux is highly secure when compared to other operating systems in which falls under the category of Windows. Not Windows, which falls under the category of GUI. Okay, and if you wanna excel your career in Linux, the very first thing that you need to uh, consider in your mind is in Linux, everything is a file. Okay, and in Linux, everything is case sensitive. Okay, even the file names, what are the configuration values that you create, the data that you pass, everything is case sensitive. Okay, that also means if the username is CentOS, all lowercase letters, and if you create a user account with capital C, and if you attempt to connect using lower C, it will not work. It will not work because it's case sensitive. As I mentioned in Linux, everything is a file. For example, if you want to update the property of the any 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 configuration value of the system, or if you want to change the property of the any system or you want to change any setting, all you need to do is you just need to come and update a file. That means you should know how to create a file, how to update a file and how to save a file. There is something we'll discuss soon. And there is no concept of file extension. Okay, Linux is not going to stop you if you use, but fundamentally, even if you use sample.txt or sample, it's just a file. And here in this case, sample.txt is a file name. Resume.word is a file name. Okay, so in Linux, but even though there is no concept of a file extension, we still tend to use it because we are so much used to the Windows ecosystem. So we follow this, but still there is no difference. All right, so before I proceed, anyone has any sort of questions? Anyone has any sort of questions? 
all right let's get started so today we'll focus more on let's learn linux guys let's learn linux and to learn linux <clears throat> and to learn linux we should have a machine so let's try to create a machine so before i proceed anyone has any sort of questions i could see naresh hand raised go ahead naresh yeah so like for the spot server uh, once we created the spot server if we are not required that spot server so if we terminated that spot one so whatever the associated instance is running that will auto that is still running so whenever it 24 hours reaches it will automatically delete or like what it will happens in the background uh, your question is contradictory first you have asked what if if i terminate a spot request spot server. yeah again so you need to be little clear spot server or the spot request spot request so the it's it cancels the server you have an option that is the default option you want to cancel mm -hmm. the request but the server shouldn't be deleted there is also an option if you are canceling the request there is an option do you want to terminate the instances that are associated with this you need to check mark this okay yeah i did that but i'm like uh, when i was doing some practice we'll see so... that yeah we'll see that okay again. okay right. yeah Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, Vedant, go ahead. Uh, so, like, uh, we know Linux is Linux can handle uh, different kind of files. So, how does it handle the files that are, uh, you know, that are formatting kind of PDF files or something? Can it handle that? It's just a file. That's it. But if you ask me, I have an MP4 file and can I play it on Linux? The answer is no. It's just a simulator, right? But if your Linux machine is having a graphical user interface, it can also play videos. Okay, so that converts the binary file into the, the converts conversion happens. That's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not clear with the question. So yeah. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Perfect. Let's get started, guys. Okay. So we would like to, I think I don't see any questions in the chat window as well. Uh, yeah, I think let's get started. So let me try to create a server. Let me try to SSH. Let, let me try to connect. <coughs> yes, I entered into this. Now let me select this. Now, what I'm going to use, I'm not, uh, can you see this? I forgot to terminate the server yesterday. Since yesterday it is running now i want to terminate this how can i terminate this okay come here come here select the spot request and come here and cancel the request can you see this by default the option is terminate is selected okay that means by default when you cancel the request the default option is Terminate the instances that are associated with this. If you are not interested, you can also select this option. But I want to cancel this because I would like to create a brand new request. Naresh. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm here and go here and you can see that the server would be in the terminate. It would be shutting down. And once it is shut down and it's going to terminate. Now I'd like to launch an instance using the learn Linux CentOS 7 image. So what I'm going to do yesterday, we have created a launch template. Launch template is nothing but uh, all the predefined options we're going to supply so that whenever you want to create any similar set of thing, you don't have to worry about go and try to do all of it. You can come and you can see that. Come and launch the instance from the template. How many instances you want? I want one. Okay. And do you want to go without a key pair? Yes. That's the only option that I would select. All right, the instance is launched. Now you can see, I would like to name an instance as uh, CentOS 7 Learning Dev Server. All right. Now come here and select this, copy the IP address and connect to it. Okay. Now today I'm using a MacBook. All right. Uh, come here, SSH, enter, yes. Yes. I'm entering the password. Okay. Now you can see I connected to the server. So in Linux, 
everything is a file okay in linux everything is a file so we need to understand one point okay we should be very very clear on this okay in linux there are two types of users okay two types of users okay so let's try to understand it user accounts a server is something that is created to be used by a number of people so user accounts are of two types okay typically not even user accounts accounts are of two types the first thing is privileged user account user account or user id <clears throat> and the other is normal user okay what exactly does this mean so in if i ask you who is the privileged user who is a user who can do anything on the windows machine if if i ask you this what will be your answer anyone 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 obviously if i ask you what is the privileged user account or an account which can do anything on the windows machine admin or administrator right so he is the user which will be created by default when you install the windows operating system agree similarly you take any flavor of windows you take any flavor of linux okay you take any flavor out of 300 or 400 in all the flavors of linux the privileged user account is root and he can do anything everything in the system not everyone every user account every user profile that we create on the system can do everything no only the root user can do anything any configuration related changes any system restart any patching anything everything can only be done by the particular user root okay and he is the first user account that will be created in the system and root user accounts okay if any user signs into the root, he should see the prompt as hash. Okay. Rest of the users, for example, normal users, CentOS is a regular user account. And if you see this, his prompt is dollar. Where can I see that? Let me try to show you that. And that is that cannot be true all the time. Because in Linux you can change anything. Okay, and if you look at this dollar prompt, if you see the dollar prompt, that means he's a regular user, not a privileged user. Okay. So that is one point I wanna mention. And again, in Linux, everything is a command, everything is a file. Everything is a command, everything is a file. So the fundamental syntax of Linux. And again, whatever I'm gonna teach, everything I have enclosed in this 1500 pages of, 1500 lines of uh, Linux notes, okay? You don't have to take any notes, just seamlessly come and use it. Everything that we are gonna talk, I have documented it. So it's going to be very easy and straightforward. All right, guys? So please refrain taking notes because we're going to help you with all the notes, okay? However, we are publishing the notes, okay? Now, in Linux, everything is a file, okay? But how to read a file? How to display something, okay? That means you need to use some command, okay? So the command syntax in Linux. Syntax is nothing but rules or a format that to follow syntax in Linux. Okay, so this will be the command syntax, command name. I tend to use whenever I'm using Linux based commands, I tend to denote that with a dollar, dollar. That means I'm writing it in a terminal just to indicate. And you can mention the options if you have any options. Okay, so this is how it works. For example, and the sample example of it is, okay, ls ls is something to list the available files to list the available content okay so if you give hyphen l hyphen t hyphen r these are the options okay guys so likewise you can give whatever the options you wish all right this is how you can use okay let me try to show you so typically if you want to know what is the server name your name is a command okay let me write increase my font size. Yeah, uname is a command which tells you what it is. Okay, what is the name of it? You know what? The beauty of Linux is 
if you got into any challenges or if you want to find something or if you want to know what all options it offers typically if it is in windows or mac you go to the internet and you search how to get this option but in linux it has the helps option it has the manual page for all the commands that you see okay how if you want to know what all options okay what all options that it offers just like i mentioned what these options how do you know hyphen l t r okay you can come to know by using man command okay so man man means manual you take a bike you take a car it will have a manual right how to use that car right similarly you have a manual for each and every command so i want to know what all options this does and or what all it does you can type man okay man means manual page and it says you name is going to print the system information which system your linux server or whatever the system that you have connected so it's going to print the system information here system is nothing but server all right and you name and you can give the options as well what all options it offers if you give hyphen a okay which is a short notation and hyphen a long form is hyphen hyphen all okay it's gonna print all the information but do i need to remember all these things 100 percent no okay you should know how to do what to do the rest of them you can find it in the help or in the internet okay so perfect now typically kernel if you want to know the kernel name of this operating system or if you want to know the kernel version okay you can use okay you name hyphen s or hyphen v okay so let me try to show you that so you name hyphen a it's gonna show me all the options okay all the system information it shows okay and it also it says that it is generally gnu linux that means it is not linux generally not unix of linux and x86 x86 is nothing but the 64 architecture of amd processor and these are the information and you can also see what is the kernel version and rather if you are interested about only version of the current kernel you can also use hyphen a this is one of the most commonly asked question sorry okay and this is the kernel release okay this is the kernel release all right operating system version is different or operating system release version is different your kernel version is different all right perfect now in linux as i mentioned everything is a file how can i read a file hmm. so cat is a command where you can read any file cat file name okay this is gonna read the entire file and it's going to show you now how can i create a file same thing touch is a command to create a file <clears throat> okay cat space file name that you wish okay cat file name to be created okay so this is going to this is how you're going to read the file and this is how you're going to create a file okay so for example whenever you are buying a computer what is the first thing that you go and check or for example if you want to buy a computer what is the first thing that you go and check hard disk ram yes first you go and check what all what first of all you will understand what is my requirement okay if you are a professional graphics editor or you are a professional editor you need some high cpu high memory for example you are a software engineer or a regular user you you can need minimum resources or for example if you are a vmware trainer they teach vmware servers everything on the top of the similar machine so you would need some high-end server right so that means you should know how much cpu you want how much memory you're gonna use and what is the disk that you want okay if you ask me windows you can type windows c command where you can see all the resources right but in linux it's not like that in linux everything is a file if you want to read if you want to know what is the cpu information or if you want to know what is the memory information or if you want to know what is the disk allocated or if you want to know how much disk is utilized or if you want to know how much process it is utilizing how many processes are running how, which process is taking more cpu or which process is taking more memory everything is a command to get started with if you want to know the cpu related information okay so you can type the command cat and proc proc is a directory so in linux okay in windows if you if you want to redirect you use c okay users right and say james bond okay files right this is how sample.txt okay in windows this is how the directory path agree but okay in windows we are going to use the backward slash and this is called as a backward slash 
okay in in linux all you see is a forward slash and this is called as a forward slash since it is forward okay people who are coming from the windows they tend to use this backward slash but it will not work and if you are a newbie in linux please try to use forward slash only if not it will won't work okay and cat cat is a command to read a file and i could see a file called as a proc okay there is a file there is a directory called as a proc it's also called as a proc or process so within the process directory there is a file called as a cpu info okay so cpu info which is going to display all the cpu related information okay see if you see this i am using two cpus i am not using t2 micro i am using t3 micro right what t3 micro offers me it offers me two cpus on one gig of memory and that's the reason you are seeing the two cpus information and if you see this and the vendor usually uh, you can see the processor intel processors m1 m2 processor sorry amd processor right intel is one of the vendor so here you can see the processor is zero that means out of two process this is a processor is zero and one that means you have two processors on this server okay fine now who is the vendor id the vendor id is genuine intel that means intel is the you are running your machine on the top of the intel server okay intel processor and cpu family this is a code and similarly it's not just cpu is intel again in the intel there are lot of varieties xeon based processor platinum based processor lot of options are there right in this your cpu your machine is running on the top of the intel's xeon processor and lot of options are available and you can see that it is a 48 bits virtual and don't worry about uh, what what is the rest of the other information okay what is the core idea all these things don't look at the chip level information okay but if you want to know how many cpus are allocated or who is the vendor or whether it is a arm based processor or it is a amd based processor okay if you want to know more about that this is the place you can come and check okay fine that means by looking at this i can understand that my server is my server is having two cpus and the two intel based processors okay fine now what's next I want to know the memory related information. I want to know how much memory it is allocated. How do I know that? Cat, similarly, in Linux, everything is a file. So cat, proc, okay, proc is a directory. I'm telling there is a file called as a meminfo, it's, which is gonna give you relation information about the memory related information. What it says, it says, it's, it's giving you the information in the KBs, okay? So KB, so 1024 bytes is equal to 1 KB, 1024 KB is equal to 1 MB, 1024 MB is equal to 1 GB, 1024 GB is equal to 1 TB, and 1024 TB is equal to 1 PB. Okay, storage is, uh, is, is, is calculated in bits and bytes, okay? But uh, since we are more used to mega, megabytes and gigabytes, okay, we might not understand, but this means it is 1 GB. And out of 1 GB, how much it is free? 792 MB is free. How much it is available? This much is available. How much is cached? Okay. So these are the four pieces of information that are important and rest of the pieces of information is also available, which we might not adopt. But if you are, if you are interested about looking into the holistic details of the memory related information, you can come and look into the memory information. All right, guys. Perfect. So next thing, what I would like to do is I would like to create a file. Okay, I would like to open edit editor. And also, I hope every one of you are following on a day to day basis, we are publishing the notes here. So there is a column called as a daily notes, so whatever we are discussing, everything I am enclosing here, along with the reference video. That means if you want to know what all topics we have covered, you don't have to go through the entire audio or entire recording. You can also come and look at this so discussion on tech and what we all went and what was the agenda that we have covered and what all topics we have covered and what is the associated video. Okay, you can come and check this. Okay, so likewise, you can also get to know the information about what's being covered in case if you miss any session, if you don't have time, you can also check what's being covered all right so let me try to create so yeah so first <clears throat> we know how to read a file right so how to create a file okay so touch is a command touch file name dot txt this is going to create the file and if you say touch 
file one dot txt file two dot txt or sample dot log it's gonna create three files as well okay you can give three 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 space i mean you can give alternatively followed by the spaces which is also going to create three files okay let me try to show you that mm -hmm. so if you see every time i'm going to the top of the screen right i'm clearing the screen clear is a command which is going to clear the screen and go and places your cursor at the top because every time if i'm teaching at the bottom of the screen it looks a little awkward and because your eyeball has to move bottom and top which is going to create some sense of disturbance and that's the reason i would like to keep the cursor on the top okay and if you think that you are not typing clear command and the shortcut for that is control l okay <clears throat> control l is a command so you can see the control command control option on the on your screen right so on your screen you have an option called the control button just press control l it's going to clear the screen all right guys the so control button followed by the l or clear button clear is an option to clear your screen all right any questions Uh, how, where are the Linux nodes that you just mentioned just a while ago? It will be in the B57 repository only. But I haven't published there yet. You will get it soon. Okay, okay. Okay. And Vedant, please don't check when I'm teaching. Just a request. Yes. Please don't do things parallelly. All right. Now we know how to create a file. Okay, how to read a file. Touch. Okay, batch57.txt. This is a file. How do I know whether the file is created or not? LS is a command which is going to show you the list of all the files that are available in this directory. Okay, LS. Can you see this? These are the list of files. But who created all these files? It was created by me in the past. Okay, so batch57.txt. Now I would like to create one more file called as touch. Okay. Ada cloud.txt sample.log kubernetes.txt. I have created three more files. LS. You can see all the three files are created. Can you see this? Kubernetes.txt, okay, sample.log, and uh, all the other things. But it's not displaying in an order where I have created, right? I have created sample.log here, but it is showing at the end. That is called as a recursive view. If you want to create, if you want your information should be created in a view where in the order where you have created in the reverse order, you can use an option called as LS LTR. The same information, okay, LS with it's going to give you in a different uh, format, okay, rather than horizontal view, it's going to give you in a vertical view, okay. It says cloud.txt is a file which was created recent. Okay, and then likewise, kubernetes.txt, batch57, okay, all these files are available. All right, now, where are these files created? Where are these files created? I want to know that. Hmm. That is another interesting thing. How, how do I know that? So, PWD stands for present working directory if you want to know in which directory you are in so in linux we don't use the word folder instead we use the word called as a directory okay the directory okay directory is more or less similar to folder in windows but in linux we call it as a directory if you want to know in which directory you have created this file technically if you don't mention where it has to be created by default it will be in the present working directory what is the present working directory right now you are in we are in home center yes. okay pwd stands for present working directory okay so pwd stands for present working displays present working directory so next two to three days next two days we'll focus more on linux only all right so yeah now I know how to create a file. How can I delete a file? Hmm. But what is this? I didn't explain what is LTR. 
okay so if you don't know anything all you need to do is add man so what it says okay what it says is l l stands for long list okay t stands for timestamps and r stands for recursively can you use this hyphen l use a long listing format which is nothing but the format that you see a vertical format and if you see what do you mean by t t okay and you can also see hyphen r recursive or reverse okay print this in a reverse order okay next now what do you mean by t okay sort by the modification time that means if you are having files and these files will be displayed in the order where they were modified for example out of this files if i have modified this file and this file will be shown at the bottom okay typically every time rather than using ls we use ls hyphen ltr because it's going to show you a lot of information okay it shows you what is the file name when it was last modified it's not the creation date okay as per linux create when you say creation creation is nothing but modification as per the system disk so that's the reason the date that you see is always when the file was last editor or when the file was last modified and here <clears throat> okay how many blocks of data is being consumed okay a lot of people will think it's the size of the file it's not size it it means okay this one second okay and if you look at this sorry i was a little wrong r w x r w x right let's not worry on it it's all about the permissions and centos centos which is also nothing but who is owner and group we'll talk about it tomorrow when we are talking about the user management and how many what is the size of data that it has consumed on the top of the disk okay these are pieces of information that is gonna demonstrate okay fine now i get it now how can i delete a file how can i delete a file for example touch you have created a file right now if you see this i have created the file latest and that's the reason it is showing me latest agree now i want to delete a file how can i delete that rm is a command okay rm is a command followed with the file name that's going to delete the file Okay, that's going to delete the file. For example, I would like to delete a file whose name is common.sh. Okay, rm common.sh. If you see this ls ltr, you can see this. Okay, clear? Sometimes if the file is having data, it asks you, hey, do you wish to delete the file? You need to say yes. Okay, that's also called as a forceful deletion. Now we know how to create a file and how to delete a file. Agree? That's rm file name to delete a file all right now you said that home center yes who told that my user directory or my present working directory is home center yes okay every user created on the system will have his own directory in the home folder okay, for example if there is a user called as a mic and his default home directory will be home mic by default when he sign in this will be the place where his files are created for example there is a user called a centos and if this user account is created all the files that are related to the centos user will be under this okay fine now <clears throat> i have two applications application a and application b now i want to create files in application a directory and application b directory how can i create a directory and how can i move it in between the directories that's an interesting question let's get started there okay. mkdir is a command to create a directory mk stands for make directory there is no command called as a create a folder or make a folder mkdir stands for make a directory and the directory name is app a i would like to create a directory called as app a now i also want to create a directory called as app b now ls ltr you can see that now all of them are files right all of them are files you can also see two more directories how do i know whether this is a file or a directory anyone 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 did notice anyone
so mithil directory structure the no, mithil mithil has asked a very great question what is the home directory what is the normal directory structure in linux we'll talk about it so the way how windows storage structure or the directory structure works and in linux it works with a little different we'll go there okay i'm going to address that soon all right and uh, <clears throat> asif is saying okay there are some colors and all of them are in white color and these are in the blue color right so yeah but it might not be true in all the cases okay some in some machines you won't see the colors but if you look at this these files are starting with hyphen right but if you look at these files okay and if you look at them they are starting with the d that is an indication that it is a directory that is an indication it's a directory now right now you are in the home centos directory right and under that there are two more directories called as app a and app b now i would like to move into the application a directory and i would like to create the files under that how can i do that okay cd is a cd is a command that stands for change directory okay and the example or usage of it is cd okay directory name to switch okay so let's try to see that cd and where i would like to switch i would like to switch to app a it's always recommended to keep uh, forward slash at the end of the directory okay in case if you have any other sub directories under that now if you look at this you are inside the app a directory if you want to know where you are right now you can see you are in home centos app a directory now if you create any files or anything it will be by default it will be under that i would like to create a file called as touch a hyphen payment dot txt i also want to create touch a hyphen sample dot txt okay and if you come here and if you try to list the content you can see a dot sample dot txt and p dot sample dot txt are available perfect now we know how to switch from one directory to another directory if i want to go back how can i do that there are two options if you want to go anywhere you can say for example i would like to go to home centos this is also you can mention right now if you are inside the home centos but if you are not interested okay if you want to use something interesting you can use a shortcut called as dot 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 indicates okay one step back one directory back okay change one directory back or Okay, change or move. Change or move one directory back. Okay, so if you say cd space, you need to give the space cd space dot dot. That means you will go one step back. All right. Now, similarly, if you want to go to another directory, all you need to do is cd app hyphen b. All right, now you are inside the app b. Now, ls hyphen ltr, there are no directories under that okay then not sorry there are no files under that now i would like to create files under that i would like to say touch okay b hyphen okay b hyphen terraform.txt why did i use b all right so touch okay it's dot <clears throat> all right now ls hyphen ltr perfect now you can see the files okay terraform.txt kh.txt are there but i want to create the name of the file as b.kh.txt or b.b-terraform.txt how can i do that how can i do that so you need to use some command all right how can i rename if it is windows you right click the file and once you right click the file you can say rename okay you will be having an option called as rename where using that option you can rename the file but it's not windows but how can i rename the file let's go here and try to see that okay so move is a command <clears throat> move okay move is a command and this is used to cut and paste the file or rename a file okay so we also have another option called as cp cp is like a copy and paste okay when you do a copy paste the source file will still be there and you just copy one more copy of that that's it 
but cut is not like that if you do a cut and paste the existing file that you copied will no longer be there right so how to use that so let me try to show you that and again cut has both the functionalities mv has both the functionalities okay it is just like cut and paste that also means renaming the file okay if you want to rename any file this is how you need to mention mv uh, if you feel that my uh, text pad is very minimal let me try to zoom in yeah mv file name to be renamed okay versus new file name okay so this is also like mv terraform.txt with b hyphen terraform.txt what will happen this file will be renamed terraform.txt will be renamed to this okay let's try to see that okay now ls hyphen ltr now you can see the name of the file as b hyphen terraform.txt again this mv command is a little dangerous so you need to consider a couple of points before you do this operation so what are those two operations let's try to understand that okay now i also want to rename the file k txt with b mv and uh, ls ltr can you see this now both the files are there now what i want to do is i would like to copy one more copy of this file okay and i would like to copy this file and i would like to create a duplicate file okay so how can i do that so you can use like this okay cp file name dot txt but i would like to take a backup of the file okay i always do this whenever you want to update a file or whenever you want to change the properties of the file or whenever you want to change any existing values of any of the file ensure you take a backup of it okay so really it doesn't mean backup or backup or anything is fine okay that that, that just for your understanding only okay so typically if you are from the linux world you see this word more often so what this means is it is copying the file file name.txt and is taking a copy and it's creating a one more copy of the file with the name file name.txt.backup okay let's try to see that cp b hyphen terraform b hyphen terraform.txt.bkp okay and if you see ls hyphen ltr you can see b hyphen terraform.txt b hyphen terraform.txt.backup so before you do any changes in any of the files it's always a recommended and a best practice to take a backup of the file and this is how you can take a backup of the file so things are really good but what if if i want to copy this file from here to another directory how can i do that how can i do that there are two ways so first you can use copy b hyphen kh.txt where you want to copy i would like to copy it inside the home centos folder okay okay you can mention this and this b hyphen kh.txt one more copy will be created in the home centos but while copying if you want to give a different name you can also mention that now cd dot dot that means one step back you can see the b hyphen kh.txt is there okay fine now what's next now ls hyphen ltr now i would like to go inside the app a okay very soon you will be used to it okay don't worry if you think that i am using more commands more shortcuts don't worry on it at all it's going to be quite easy okay now what i would like to do ls hyphen ltr cp a hyphen payment.txt I would like to pay inside the home dot file directory. You can also use dot dot. That means you're telling I would like to copy and paste this one step back. Okay, you can also use this cd dot dot. You can also see payment.txt is copied. All right, clear. Any questions, anyone? Yes, Avinash, go ahead. Yeah, how do we change the name while copying? Uh, what is that command? Same thing. Let me try to show you that. ls hyphen ltr cp hyphen payments dot txt. I would like to change ch save it as payments dot a dot txt. I'm changing. I'm I'm copying this file and I'm pasting it while pasting it and renaming the file. That means the new file will have payment hyphen a dot txt. 
<clears throat> can okay. you see this yeah yeah got it yeah thanks all right just mention the name or if you don't mention also that's fine okay it's gonna you can you need to mention the name what you want to copy okay oh, at least yeah. if you are in the same directory if you are copying it to a different directory that's a different story oh. but you need to understand one very important point okay let me try to paste this point which i use it see this is a very important point i often tell so we learned to touch is something which is going to create a file and rm is something which is going to delete a file and mv source and destination which is going to rename a file fine now if the destination for example whatever the file that you are trying to rename you have trying to rename payment file with the uh, sample.txt now when you are trying to rename that if the destination has already a file with the name as sample.txt now you know what will happen it will overwrite the data this is very important and if you are applying for junior roles like two years three years old they'll ask this question so when you are trying to this sounds very silly and you feel very stupid question but people even get offended okay when they ask you hey i'm a five years experience guy you are asking me how to copy you might think but the trickiest thing is whenever you are copying a file to some place with a different name or a name of your choice you need to make sure whatever the name that you are trying to create that file that name then some file should not be there with a similar name for example you are trying to copy the kubernetes file to a app a folder and within the app a folder if the kubernetes file already exists that might be the same content or different content that is a separate story while copying you know what will happen it's going to overwrite the content that is existing in that file with the new file that means you lose the data okay sometimes in the latest operating systems or the latest versions of linux it ask you hey i could see there is a file already there with a similar name do you wish to overwrite and sometimes you won't get that consider you won't get that prompt all right clear is there any possibilities to recover the copied file sorry shiva is there any possibilities to recover the file as well once it is gone it is gone i was always telling you okay okay and if you remember i always started with backup option usually people don't say backup i started with that okay so, so if something is gone that's gone yeah, Shiva. Yeah, hi, Manas. Uh, hey, hi. Just now you said if we replace the file already with an existing name, the data will all be gone. Mm -hmm. So at that time, if we use the backup, will we get? Will the data will come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we immediately use that backup option, the data will come after. Sometimes when we realize the data is rewritten, overrided. Hey, consider. Okay. Whatever the use case I said, if you listen carefully, I am trying to copy a file named as Kubernetes into a destination. Into that destination, there is already a file whose name is Kubernetes. At that time, your data will be copied there. That means the file will be overridden. So at that time, you didn't even take a backup, right? Because there is an unintended action. Make sense? Uh, yeah, got it. Actually. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, for example, um, I'm going to create a file. Okay, in Linux, there is a concept called as hidden files concept. Okay. Typically, if you wish to save any passwords, tokens, or keys, we don't expose them. But instead, hidden files, which won't be listed with ls ltr by default. OK? If you wish to, if you wish to list the hidden files, you need to use 
L S hyphen A. Okay, and hidden files. And to create a hidden file, all you need to do is dot. Okay, for example, dot passwords like that. Okay, let me try to show you that. And if you see ls hyphen ltr, there is, these are the files. Now I'll create touch. Okay, tokens. And if you try to see ls hyphen ltr, you don't see that file. Okay, you don't see that file. Dot tokens. But if you wish to see that, use hyphen a. And if the moment you see that, ls hyphen a ltr. <clears throat> okay. You added A. It's going to list all the files that are available in the hidden format as well. Okay. Typically in Windows, whenever during childhood, whenever you don't want to uh, uh, let others to see any sort of files, what we used to do, we in Windows, there is an option called as hide the files. You select the files and mark it as hide. So the same concept. Unless until you go into that particular folder and say show hidden files, it's not going to display the files, right? Same concept. All right, guys? Any questions so far? OK, perfect. Now, Manoj, you know, can you repeat one more time, please? It's a hidden file. OK, if you don't want to display the file, you can create it in a hidden file. Typically, whenever you're supplying any tokens or passwords or any any sort of sense to information in a file, typically we don't let them see. ls ltr is a common command that we use. So if you don't want to let people to see, you can use ls ltr to list the sense to files or hidden files. Okay. Answers your clear? Yeah, yes, Manoj. So uh, what my doubt is, uh, so in uh, in work field, at which case we will use this command to whom we should not show these tokens or keys? Uh, we'll see that, okay? Typically, okay. for example, just since with the knowledge that we gained in the last six days, for example, you have created a key. So such kind of keys and all will place them. So typically, if you go to dot .ssh folder, can you see this? And this is a folder where we supply the private key and public key, ls ltr. Can you see this cat authorized keys? Okay. Yes, so these yes. kind of files. So it's not just files. You can also create the folders hidden. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So now, for example, okay. Let's assume there is a this is the machine that you have taken and we have updated all the patches and whatever the machines that were created by your team in the organization, everyone should be having these files. And if these files are available, okay, you did something to get these applications, like you run some packages or something, some process you ran that has generated this. Okay, every time if someone wants to run the application and all of the files should be available. And if these files are not available, you cannot run the application. And the standard is everyone should generate these applications before they run the application. And these files are common. So every time you are downloading this or running some software to download this is a very bad deal, right? What we typically do is we try to make an AMI out of it. Okay, so how can we make an AMI out of this? Yesterday we are talking about it, but we didn't make an AMI. Let's try to make an AMI out of it. You can come here and there is an option in the action section called as a image and template. You can create a temp image, which is also called as AMI. And this I could like to say it as a B57, for example, uh, Linux image. Okay, the Linux payment image. All right. Sorry, guys, I'm having some sore throat. Yeah, I was speaking a little low. And when you're taking an AMI, okay, for example, sometimes it will take in two minutes. And for example, if it will be taking in five minutes, and sometimes it will also take one hour to create a AMI out of the machine. It also depends on how busy your machine is. If the traffic on the machine, or if you're running an application where huge number of people are accessing, that means the disk is busy, the system is busy. 
at the time if you're taking a image ami of that machine it's going to take a lot of time for example it's like taking a photo for example you're having a camera you want to take a photo to the statue since the statue won't move you can immediately take but what if if you want to take a nice photograph to a bird which is moving so it definitely takes time because you need to capture you need to take you need to take whenever it is stopped right so similarly thousands of files are there and if you're trying to take an ami and if the machine is busy or if the files are keep on updating sometimes it takes a lot of time and also it's always recommended to enable this uh, no uh, don't enable this <clears throat> no read boot option because when you don't do that your system even go for a reboot where you get the best copy of your ami okay that means you're getting a copy of your ami okay and if you you can also add multiple disks under this okay one server can have n number of disks keep this point in mind and this disk that you see here is called as a root volume all right so the disk that you see here is called as a root volume where your operating system is installed typically in organization you'll also see two more disks three more disks okay so each and every volume is going to store some application a data or application b data okay for now i would like to demonstrate how to take an ami and once you take an ami and if you create any other instance using that ami you can see whatever the data or whatever the configuration that was there you can see everything <clears throat> okay so for example i would like to come here and create a user account okay i didn't explain how to create a user account for now i would like to say user user add batch 57 user i created a user account called as okay batch 54 user account don't worry what is this sudo i didn't explain user ad is a uh, that command also i didn't explain but this is a command to create a user account okay id batch 57 hyphen user okay now i'll also create another user account called as okay i also want to create another user account called as michael steve okay this is another user account okay so id michael steve as a part of the application requirement so you need to have all this once you are configuring the application so i'm taking an ami create an image now what will happen it's going to make a ami and where can i see the status of it <clears throat> come here and click the ami status and you can see the status of the ami is pending because it is still in the phase of taking okay since you have mentioned uh, enable reboot it's also going to reboot your server okay so ensure whenever you're taking the ami ensure your machine is not busy and at the same time ensure if it is a production machine or you are taking a backup of the machine of my mission critical application ensure you select taking the ami when the machine is not busy and at the same time ensure you select okay do not reboot option if not it's going to reboot the server okay this is a very important point okay i have created a ami and it's in the phase of taking the ami okay now an ami is creating by taking the reference from our existing machine all right now i could see one hand raised yeah we know over to you yeah manoj in that the ls hyphen altr mm -hmm. command Mm -hmm. I see two directories, a dot and a mm -hmm. dot, dot. Mm -hmm. These are the by default they will be coming up, which are created by the system. Yeah, you can, can also I create a directory. The content in the... mm -hmm. Is it like it will hold all those hidden files or? No, no, no. Is it, it like is also a hidden not... folder. Hidden folder. That's it. Okay. You can also create a folder with the name as dot, dot. <laughs> Okay, that means okay, it's a bad I thought right. like it will hold all these hidden no, no, files. That's like not true. That's not true. Time. That's not true. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, can you just tell once like how to create a hidden file? Uh, what command do we use to create a hidden file? Uh, hidden cup. See, hidden file. We are, we are just calling it. But if I if I ask you how to create a file, how do you create a file? what is the command not, uh, uh, touch that's so same creating the file not gonna change all you do is instead of touch okay dot file name that's it this will be a hidden file now okay if we write dot in the first it becomes a that's hidden it file. yes okay. okay yes all right 
and uh, let this let's see whether the machine came up or not and it's still in the pending state and i'll also bring it to you one more attention so guys uh most of you would have got emails okay yesterday majority of the people have confirmed their enrollment and majority of them would have got an email from me uh, with a note onboarding email or a starter email in case if you got that please ensure you use the meeting link that is available in this starting from monday or people who are joining from states sunday night okay using the updated meeting link and i also want to update you that all the <clears throat> free sessions are completed okay all the free sessions are completed please ensure you confirm your enrollment so to continue uh, further i hope you like the content i also want to mention that all the free sessions are completed from monday sessions are going to be private and meeting link would be different starting from monday and uh, if you have not confirmed your enrollment so far please confirm your enrollment and we are going to start working on project either from tuesday or wednesday and very soon i'm also going to demonstrate what is the project and what are the projects that we are going to work okay so again i repeat please use the new meeting link that was shared with you from monday and from monday the meeting link that you are using won't work and you don't even have to enter the details okay i also want to mention that uh, all the free sessions are completed and from monday sessions are not going to be public on uh, youtube just a announcement okay in case if you have already confirmed thank you very much in case in the unlikely event if you haven't mentioned please do confirm your enrollment okay so today is the last session of the free sessions and i also thank you each and every one majority of the people whom i have seen are almost joining from the day one i want to thank you for that so yeah thanks for believing in us all right. I have missed the previous sessions. How can I pick up the mystery classes? I did not get email. How can I? So, Mithil, you need to confirm. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if you are joining from the meeting link that has a number, so you need to contact the number. In, in If you are joining using a link called Manoj, you will see my number. You can connect me using that link. Okay, if you if you have missed the last four sessions, that's totally fine. Okay, you can cover them. I'm gonna give you access to it. Okay, people who have already confirmed and if they have not received email, don't worry, you will get them very soon. All right, <clears throat> perfect. Now you can see that it is in the available state. Can you see this? Now, if I try to create a machine by using this AMI okay now if you come here and if you look at this this is not a public ami okay amis can be public and private and typically whatever the amis that you're using is a public ami because you are able to search because i made that image public but by default when you make any ami in the organization or in the aws account it will be private even in the organizations the organization whatever the amis that you made will purely be private okay others outside the aws cannot see that okay because that is confidential right you cannot do that okay and even in this org even in this training we'll make sure <clears throat> we create both of it all right so we have created an ami right and using this ami i would like to create a new machine so i would like to launch an instance from the ami and ami okay server from ami just for our understanding all right you can scroll down and you need to mention proceed without a keeper and i'm gonna go with a t3.micro because it's going to be a little fast all right and i mentioned already and i would like to go with the gp3 which is a general purpose third generation hardware and i'm not creating spot because i'm okay i'm gonna delete it however all right All right, now my machine has been started. Now you can come here and you can see that the server is in the running state and look at the status checks and the status check says still it's in the initializing phase. And again, a lot of people has asked me, how can I check the system logs or how, how do I check what's happening in the system when it is coming up? So in the action section, you have an option called as a monitor and troubleshoot. You can get the get instance screenshot to see what's happening in the background. Okay, so you, you can see the login screen. That means the server is up. All right, guys. So let's try to connect to that. Copy. SSH. <clears throat> Center is. 
Now you should be, this is a brand new server that we have created from the AMI, okay? So from a machine that has all the configuration. Now say yes, enter the password, and you can see this, okay? Now LS-LTR, okay, uptime, if you see this, this machine just came up, and it has payments-a.txt, app directory, devops.txt, all of this, including the files that we have created, Michael Steve, and ID, uh, B58, what is the user account that we have created? I don't remember. Mm, what is the user account that we have created, other user account? I think some batch 57 user or something. Uh, can you see this? Yes. So this is how we can create a base image update the patches, install the application, configure all the needed things, and define the parameters, and then create an AMI out of it. And once you create an AMI out of it, what will happen? Whenever you launch any instance out of it, you will get the values from there. Okay, perfect. Now, for example, typically you would be seeing it, okay? We know how to see the CPU utilization. We know how to see the memory utilization. But how can we see the disk utilization. How can I see the number of disks that are attached to it? How do I know that? How do I know that? So the command for that is df. df stands for display file system. Okay. So you hit enter, which is showing you the information. You can see the information that is available in the bytes, which you don't understand. Okay. So whenever you see this, okay, man, df, you can see the list of options that it allows. And if you want something in the readable format, of human readable format, that's going to display the fi file size in KBs, megabytes, and gigabytes. And right now, it's displaying the information in bytes. So the option is DF-H, which is going to show you the list of, okay, list of disk. It's going to show you the disk in and the utilization of it in a human readable format. <clears throat> in a human readable format. Now, I can see the disk size is 8 GB and just use 2.6 GB. I told you, right? For example, in Windows, if you want to install an operating system, the operating system will eat almost 60 to 100 GB of storage, right? But if you hear, you see the CentOS 7 operating system, altogether it can just consume 2.5 GB of disk space. And if you take uh, the so-called uh, Android operating systems that you're using on your mobile phone or the cell phone are also Linux-based, guys. Android is also a flavor of Linux. It's a mobile flavor, that's it. Okay, and that's the reason Android operating systems are just of 100 MB, 200 MB, 300 MB. Okay, and that's the beauty of Linux. With a very minimal resources, you can do wonders. Okay, now, for example, one of the most common use cases is, okay, uh, how do I see the list of disks that are added in the server? Okay, so one option is you can go to the server and you can come to the storage section of the server and you can see the number of disks that are attached is one now i want to create one more server sorry i want to create one more disk okay but let's assume you don't have access to the console for example i want to see how many disks are attached in the server the command for that is lsblk okay list the block devices that are attached in the server Okay, you can see the number of block devices that are attached is one. Okay, and for this graphic card, NVMe is a SCSI card or the storage disk card, and for that, 8 GB disk is attached. Okay, now if you run out of disk, here are the common asks. Okay, common asks. how to extend the existing disk okay from 8 to 15 gb okay now how to add a new disk okay back in days okay before cloud whenever i was working on on prem or in the vmware cloud here is how we used to work okay so we used to raise a request, okay? We take manager approval, additional storage request. 
okay and post approval we will raise a request with storage team for storage provisioning okay and once the provision and uh, they assign that lun lun stands for logical unit this is the storage terminology let's call it as a storage unit to avoid confusion now from the infra team we have to extend the disk we have to scan for that disk once it is recognized we need to add it so whenever we get a storage request it used to take two to three days of time okay but now it's going to be very easy now now we go to the terraform and update the value and run the job it just goes by again it goes by approval minutes that is the reason people are behind cloud now i'm going to show you but however we didn't go through terraform at so what i'm going to i would like to go and i would like to show you from the console okay all you need to do is select this and these disks are called as block level storage okay i also want to tell one more point okay storage is of three types this is very interesting concept which we will talk on monday okay storage types there are block level storage object or file level storage and shared storage okay so object level storage is just like the google drive okay on the google drive you can save the objects okay but on the google drive you cannot install vlc player or you cannot install the operating system right agree so for example you have connected a extended drive okay storage disk to your storage drive uh, external drive to your computer can you install operating system or can you install operating or any softwares on it no it's an object level storage device block level storage is nothing but the disk that we are using to install operating system and shared storage is nothing but in organizations we have some shared network drive right okay or a disk or a unit or mount point which can be used across multiple places for example okay there is a there is a drive okay for example there is a file 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 share where all the organization photos team outings all this information will be there or, or let's assume there is a file system where all the linux systems that are connected to it should be able to read and write but the normal amis or the disk that we are using they cannot do that okay. so you can have one one disk point okay that's called as a file share and all the servers can parallelly read and parallelly write Okay, and these type of storage are called as a shared storage. <laughs> okay, and whatever the storage that we are using on uh, for a server is called as elastic block storage. And as a part of the free tier, only the thirty GB is free. <clears throat> okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'll come here and I'll try to modify the volume. Keep in mind, you can only extend, but you cannot come down. Okay, once it is went to fifteen eight GB to fifteen, you cannot come down. Okay, so modify <clears throat> and modifying will take almost five to ten minutes of time. Okay, because it really has to extend. And if you see, it is in use modifying. Once this modifying come earlier till two thousand eighteen nineteen. Okay, uh, where the uh, disk type is GP one and GP two. I mean, at the time whenever you are extending the disk back in days, even on cloud, we used to restart the server. only when you restart the server the latest uh, updated disk value is going to show but right now you don't need and if the disk value shows up as 100% you can see the disk size all right and uh, so yeah i think i would like to limit the session uh, with that note for today
and i also want to bring it to your attention that today is the last day of the free sessions and we have offered a six sessions till date uh, including demo it's a seven sessions till date and i want to thank each and everyone who has shared their interest to learn something really exciting and interesting and i feel that you have uh, you feel I, I assume that you like the content as quite competent and uh, if you like the content please ensure you confirm your enrollment and if you like the content, uh, ensure you confirm the enrollment to the respected parties. If I am your coordinator, please ensure you confirm your enrollment. Confirming your enrollment is, hey, Manoj, I like the content. I would, write, I would like to proceed further. And this is the Gmail address. I expect you to send a shout out. Okay. If you are receiving the messages from me, please respond back. I, I would like to confirm. And majority of the people whom I could see have confirmed their enrollment. I would like to sincerely thank each and everyone uh, for confirming your en enrollment. And with that note, I would like to also mention that the meeting link that you're using right now, today, till date, is not going to work. Starting from Monday, or people who are joining from states, a Sunday night, meeting link is going to be something that we are going to share you. And all free sessions are completed, and from Monday, sessions are going to be private. Okay, please confirm your enrollment. And that's for today. And if you have any questions, we're open to take up. And again, a lot of people have asked me, what projects are you going to do? Let me show you that. In total, we're going to do a couple of projects. And one of the project is a e-commerce based project. Okay. And it's a pretty big project. And usually outside in the market, okay, we deal things manually first, right? We deal things everywhere you see DevOps training means things starts with what is Git, what is DevOps, what is Cloud, what is Kubernetes, what is Docker, one month gone. We are not like that. That's not how things are going to work. In projects, you don't adopt the technology first and then do the business. You do the business first and then technology comes next. That's how things work. Similarly, in our training, we do the same. It's an e-commerce based project with 11 servers and four databases. Okay, it's a pretty big project. And it's also called as a micro services based project. Usually in interview, they'll ask you what all technologies you have worked on or what technology your project is developed. Either it will be either Python or Java, but this project is developed by using Python java go node.js and you can also say my project is utilizing mongo database amazon mq redis and mysql it's a pretty big project and this project is from ibm it's an ibm open source project <clears throat> okay this is a project which we, which is uh, which will be used by amazon for demonstrating their products. Okay, this is just, a, it is a open source project from Instana. Instana is a company uh, which is recently acquired by IBM and it, it is a top notch product in observability. Okay, for giving the distributed trace and all. Whenever you want to technically, for example, if you want to sell your product, you should demonstrate your product. And if you want to demonstrate your product, you should have a project first, right? So with that note, they have developed a project to develop their customers. And if you see this, almost 18 serious developers have contributed this project. And it is a very active project, by the way. Okay, I think um, last one year, there is no active development. That is a pretty handsome project. So if you do this project, you can even demonstrate in interviews that you have e-commerce knowledge. Okay, and how we share the knowledge and how we share the anatomy, everything we're gonna mention everything in detail. Okay, just like how in our organization we have used as a complaints page. How do you do the front end configuration? Okay, once it's completed, how to do the next and what is the expected output? Once this component is completed, next. And once it is done, we'll try to see the expected outputs are coming or not. And once you see the expected output, what we're gonna do is we'll try to identify the gaps. And then from the gaps that we have identified, we'll try to make sure we'll automate it. Okay, so for all these things to happen, you should be very competent with the Linux. Again, that's what we are heading towards. You should be very patient for the next one or two days. And we're going to learn all the Linux basics to the core. And then we'll fly from there. And that's for today. Okay. And again, I would like to bring to your attention that all free sessions are completed. Kindly confirm your enrollment. Okay. And I'm good for today. If you have any questions, and I'm ready to take up the questions. Uh -huh. Uh, hello yes uh, so how long will the course or duration be like how many hours it is a 135 hours training program roughly it's gonna take two and a half three months 
so this started on okay so i think it will be and it the course will end by uh, end of april 31st of april 30th of april yeah okay and the fees i can discuss with you yeah yes we can we can talk offline yeah thank you you're getting the messages right vedant from my number yes yes yeah. yes reach me back okay okay Uh, any questions anyone any questions questions any questions guys so anil avinash vinod vedant chinna bauraj bharat yeah shashikala hi please tell me yeah uh, manoj um, from which email id uh... I would have got the email uh, for this enrollment. Uh, just, just send any send your email address with me. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions, guys? Vishwanath, Venkat. Manoj, in that project, uh, not all tools we are going to use in that main project. That's uh, what do you mean by tools? Yeah. Like uh, Jenkins, Kubernetes, like that? Uh, yeah, the pipeline flow, I mean. Everything we're going to use. I think if you attend my demo, I have clearly demonstrated whatever the tools that we're going to use. And uh, please watch that uh, demo that we have given. And here are the list of tools that we're going to cover. Okay, basic administration, Git, bash scripting, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, Git branching strategy, Terraform, Ansible, Jenkins, okay, orchestration, Helm, Prometheus, Grafana, Elastic, Logstash, Kibana. And these are the 16 tools that we are going to cover on DevOps. Everything in a project oriented approach, not just what is what. We'll talk the project as a source of truth and we'll implement the technology on the top of it. Clear? Any questions, anyone? All right. I'll take it as no questions and uh... With that note, I would like to bring to your attention again. Thank you very much for attending the last one week of sessions. It's really a pleasure teaching you all. And thank you very much and see you on Monday. I think I wish I, I wish to see most of you all in the upcoming session. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for your patience and thanks for your commitment. And this clearly shows how much you are passionate about what you want to learn. And I'll try, I'll try to make sure I'll try to play a very important role in your career transition. I'll try my best. Thank you very much. Signing off. Thank you.